Hello, and welcome to our first video about formal language theory. Um, in this video, we're going to talk about what a formal language is and why we might want to uh, have a theory for it. Um, so in some of the previous videos that I've posted here, um, particularly the ones about logic, we've talked about the notion of a, of a, lang of a formal version of a language um, in, in, in these terms, right? Where the, that a formal language has an alphabet, which is a set of symbols um, that you can draw from, a syntax, which tells you about what orders you can place those, um, those uh, symbols in, and possibly, though not necessarily, a semantics, which gives deeper meaning to those um, syntactically well-formed expressions. Um, and that's essentially what a formal language is, but we're going to get a lot more um, formal, a lot more fancy about the way that we talk about these things. Um, and we're especially going to delve into the different types of um, syntaxes that you can have for a language. And we're going to talk about this in slightly different terms in this unit. So. Um, Broadly speaking, in, in formal language theory, we define a language, which we usually give the name L, right, a capital letter L. A language L is a possibly infinite set of strings over a finite alphabet, right? So um, this alphabet gets this, uses this symbol um, and is just a set of, of um, symbols of some sort, right? So this is your alphabet. You could have an alphabet like this that has the symbol A and the symbol B, and your language could be any, uh, you know, uh, sequence of the A's and B's restricted in any sort of way you want, right? But a language L is a possibly infinite set of strings over a finite alphabet. So if you have this finite alphabet, you could have a language that is just A comma B, right? You could have a language L that is just this the set containing A and the set containing B, right? That could be your language L, or even smaller, you could go, right? Um, and that could still be a language over this alphabet. You're just drawing symbols from this set to make another set. Now, most commonly, languages will be a lot bigger than this, right? You'll have um, languages that follow rules in order to make infinite set of sets of strings. Um, uh, when you're doing this, um, uh, you're essentially uh, following this set of steps. So we define uh, uh, sigma star as the alphabet, um, and then you take any possible string that you can possibly make out of this alphabet is sigma star, right? So for example, this alphabet A comma B would be a, B, A, B, B, A, 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 B, B, A, 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 B, and so on and so forth um, until you've created every possible uh, sequence of A's and B's. And this would be your sigma star. Now that would be an infinite set, right? Because you can just keep on adding A's at the end, or B's, or A's and B's at the end, and it will create an infinite set. Um, your language can also be an infinite set, but still not contain every single option that is in sigma star. So um, your language might be any uh, sequence, oh, this one's not supposed to be there, but it might be any sequence of A's and B's that starts with an A, right? So this would still be infinite because you can still add A's and B's at the end, right? But it won't be as big, as infinite, as this set where you can start a, a string with a B, right? Um, but what is going to be the case always is that every language will be a subset of sigma star. So of, um, of your, your list of every possible string using that alphabet, your language will be a subset of that. Which means that if you were to create a set of all the possible languages over a given alphabet, sigma, that the, that, the, that set would be the power set of this, right? It's the set of every possible language, every possible subset of strings from this set, right? Um, and so you can give the size of this power set as two to the power of sigma, two to the power of the cardinality of sigma star, right? We're, we're drawing all back our, our, our set theory stuff here, right? Um, 
So that means that this is this this is the number of possible languages. Um, using a given alphabet. So if you're if you're curious about the number of possible languages, now usually this will be infinite um, in the cases that we're going to be talking about, but it wouldn't necessarily have to. I don't know. Maybe it would be it would be infinite always. All right. Um, so once we have a language, which is just a set of strings, right? Once we have our language, um, we can create a grammar for that language. And this is like, we've talked about this as a syntax before. Um, that's the word we've used when we were doing logic. We called it a syntax. Now we're going to call it a grammar. And a grammar is essentially any logical system that you can use to prove that a given string is a member of L or is not a member of L. So um, remember when we were doing uh, expressions in propositional logic, we had a set of rules to determine a well-formed formula, right? And so when you fed this through our set of rules to determine whether something was a well-formed formula, you would find out that it is because we had a rule that said any lowercase letter of the alphabet is a well-formed formula. Any two well-formed formulas can be linked together in this construction. And so this proves that the whole thing is a well-formed formula. Similarly, we could prove that this was not a well-formed formula because even though we had a rule that said um, any lowercase letter of alphabet is letter of the alphabet is a well-formed formula and any well-formed formula preceded by this symbol is a well-formed formula. We do not have a rule that says you can enclose any well-formed formula in parentheses, so this rule does not exist. Right, and so that lets us determine that this is not a, a member of the language L if L is propositional logic expressions, right? And just like that, we can determine that this is. I'm not going to walk through all the steps, but um, so we can consider that list of rules that we have for how to make well-formed formulae um, grammars. And that's what we're mostly going to focus on in, um, in this unit is what kinds of grammars can we have? How can we define those grammars? What kinds of grammars are more complicated than other types of grammars? Um, all that stuff, all that fun stuff. So that's mostly what we're going to cover um, when we talk about formal language theory is how can we express our grammars um, and what can we do with our grammars to make different types of language definitions. All right, so this has been our first uh, lesson about formal language theory. I hope you enjoyed it.